Hey, I'm Dave from Jam Hub, and today we're going to show you how to build the most affordable in-ear monitor mixer for your live performances using the venerable Jam Hub Studio. Fans from around the world send us photographs of themselves using their Jam Hub Studios to power their in-ear monitors on stage. And we also get letters from around the world from people asking, how exactly do I do this? So, we decided we were going to undertake the experiment. We have spent the last month or so playing with different gear, putting different things together, wiring it up, listening to things that don't sound good at all, and came up with something that sounds great. And it's this. It's real simple. All you need is a cheap used rack, a venerable Jam Hub Studio, a splitter, and some DI boxes. From there, it's all putting it together with some high quality cables, dragging it on stage, and having a good time. So the primary thing that you need to understand when going into this project is that your sound guy wants all XLR cables, but your Jam Hub Studio, which is actually going to be driving your in-ear monitors, has quarter inch ins for your instruments and XLR ins for your microphone. So we're going to split things in a couple of different ways to make sure everybody is happy. First, we have an ART-S8 splitter. What that does is take one microphone in on the front and splits it into two microphone outs in the back. One microphone out is going to go into your Jam Hub Studio, the other is going to go to the front of house via Snake. Next, we have these nice little passive DI boxes which we picked up for next to nothing at our local music store. And what these are, are a quarter inch instrument in, a quarter inch instrument out, which will go to your Jam Hub Studio, and on the back, there's an XLR out, which will go to the front of house. So now you want to diagram out your band to figure out what each individual member's signal path is going to be. For example, this is my band. And this is a more traditional four-piece rock band. So for every quarter-inch line that your band is running, you're going to need one direct box, and for every microphone that you're running, you're going to need one channel on your splitter. The Jam Hub Studio that we're using for this project is the Jam Hub Tour Bus, which allows us to record everything that we're doing while we're playing. If you can fit your band into just five sections, you can absolutely go with the Jam Hub Bedroom, which is much more affordable and a little bit smaller and more compact. Now before we put this together, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, but Jam Hub guy, you've completely forgotten about the drummer. Very astute. I have forgotten nothing. Drums are a bit of a sticky issue here because Jam Hub Studios are not really the most adept way to mic drums. So, you got a few different options. If the sound guy that you're working with is using his own gear to mic the drum kit, let him do it. Let him take his own signal and do his own thing. You bring a separate boom stand and microphone, stick that microphone right over the drum kit and run it straight in the Jam Hub Studio. So the band is getting a nice overview of what the drums are doing without mucking with the sound guy's signal at all. If you're micing the drums yourself, well then you're going to be submixing anyway, so run a submix into your Jam Hub Studio just like you would anything else and then split the signal somewhere along the line. Otherwise, Consider using an electronic drum kit, which gives your drummer access to an incredible quantity of sounds and makes it extremely easy to tap into a sound system. Also, on small stages, you may just be able to get away without miking the drums at all if you know those cymbals are ringing through and piercing through your in-ear monitors anyway. So, you've got a lot of options here. Explore what's best for you. Good to go. So early on in this experiment, we took a couple of pieces of plywood, ripped them down, painted them black, screwed them onto the top of this case, and put our Jam Hub Studio on top with some hook and loop product. Good to go. And now what we're going to do is take our ARTS-8 splitter here and we're going to pop it in the bottom. All right, now that we've got our splitter in place, we're going to go ahead and attach our DI boxes right on top with a little hook and loop product. So we spread out our DI boxes up top here a little bit just to keep everything clean when we actually go to do the wiring. But it's important to remember that this is just an example. So I'm setting up four sections of this Jam Hub Studio with mics and quarter inch ends. 
but you got to do whatever is right for your band. So if you're rocking uh, stereo instruments on stage, like a set of electronic drums or a keyboard, you can use a stereo DI box like this with its right and left ins, right and left outs, right and left out XLR in the back so you can get full stereo sound in the front of house. Or maybe you're like my band and literally everyone is already rocking one of these bulletproof LR bags venue DIs which already have your quarter inch in your quarter inch out and your XLR out. So you can use a piece of gear like this which is on the floor at the ready at all times to get into your Jam Hub studio and get great sound to the front of house. So have a little creative vision, have a little bit of fun with it, and now let's wire it up. Alright, so the first thing that we're going to do is wire up our DI boxes. Now, one thing to understand is that DI boxes rock out in mono while your Jam Hub studio rocks out in stereo. So. For every DI box, you're going to need a mono to stereo adapter, which fortunately two of them come in your Boxo Jam Hub Studios and the rest are available at jamhub.com. We just have some 3 foot 90 degree L bend quarter inch cables here. We're going to put one end into the out, one end into the in, good to go. All right, that's our instrument ins all wired up to the Jam Hub Studio. Now let's flip it around, do the microphones before we move on to the snake. Remember, kids, use high quality cables for high quality sound. So on the back of our splitter, we have a direct out and an isolated out. We're going to rock the direct out to our Jam Hub Studio so the isolated out can go to the front of house. All right, now let's wire up the snake. This is an eight channel snake. This is how you're gonna get your sound to the front of house. You're gonna give half of this to your friendly neighborhood sound guy while the other half stays locked in tight to this bad boy behind me. It's gonna be a good idea at this stage of the game to start labeling everything and to remain consistent as to what musician goes where in your Jam Hub studio. That way there's no confusion when it actually comes time to set up on stage. So there's nothing to it. Snake's going to go into the back of your DI box in order to get your instruments to the front of house and into the isolated side of your XLR splitter in order to get all your microphones to the front of house. Label everything. Good to go. There you have it. That's how you wire up a Jam Hub Studio for on-stage in-air use. Just add yourself a power cable, wrap it all up in the back, and you're good to go. Now, we have priced these systems out when we bargain shop for it, got used parts where we could, used a small jam hub bedroom. You can do this for about 800 bucks, not including your in-ear monitors. On top of the line stuff, all really high quality gear, you're looking at more like 1500 bucks. That is still, without question, the cheapest way to drive in-ear monitors on stage. You can do it yourself, you can build this thing in an afternoon and have a great time looking good, sounding good on stage. So I'm going to wrap everything up in the back and uh, enjoy. Right, except we're not actually done, are we? Because we haven't actually talked about in-ears. Now, in-ear monitors are a vastly superior way to get your monitor mix on stage. They let you take control while avoiding all of the pitfalls of wedge monitors, which are tone-sucking beasts, right? They send all of this signal back at your face and then bounce it into the audience, creating a muddy, unpleasant atmosphere. In-ear monitors not only look cool, they isolate you from the room, protecting your hearing and deliver a superior mix, allowing you to actually play better because you can hear better. But how do you get in-ears out from your Jam Hub studio, right? We have this tendency, because of the way we've been educated, to think of in-ear monitors as fundamentally attached to wireless systems. That's bunk. Wireless systems are neat, but they're wicked expensive, there's tons of crosstalk, they're really difficult to manage, and they're really built for large stages, where small stages are actually the places that we want to be using in-ear monitors, because small stages are the most sonically cramped. We need our instruments to be able to breathe more, to not have to fight the room as much, and in-ear monitors let us do this. So what we at Jam Hub advocate is using more wires, that's right, run a wire from your Jam Hub studio over to your belt, over to your instrument, just tape it with your instrument cable, making your own little snake, and then run your headphones, your in-ear monitors, up, the, up your back and into your ears. It sounds great, it looks good, it feels good, you still have total freedom of movement, and you have a better show. In-ear monitors, man, way to go. 
This is a Jam Hub headphone extension cable. Now what this is, is a quarter inch stereo male on one side, which you plug directly into your Jam Hub studio to get your monitor feed on stage, and an eighth inch stereo female on the other side, which is where you plug in your in-ear monitors. Now these particular in-ears are from Logitech. These are Ultimate Ears UE900s. They sound absolutely fantastic. They give you a studio quality jamming experience every time you perform. On top of that, they happen to look cool in my personal opinion, and they have a couple of really neat features that give them just a leg up in comfort, like this little clip. You attach that clip to the back of your shirt, and even though you've got this looped around your belt so there's no real cable weight on your ears, this little clip takes even more of that weight off, making it a really comfortable experience. You'll never even know they're in, letting you play at your best every time. I'm Dave from Jam Hub. Thank you so much for hanging out with us today and learning more about how to use your Jam Hub Studios to drive your in-ear monitors on stage, giving you access to better sound, more control, so you can play better. Get out there, rock the stage. Boink!